Help me if you can, I've got to get back to the house at the corner by one. You'd be surprised there's so much to be done. Count all the bees in the hive. Chase all the clouds from the sky. Back to the days of Christopher Robin. The fourth song in the Pluck a Chuck guitar series is Return to Pooh Corner by Kenny Loggins and Jim Messina. And um, I just want to remind all the new people that we have a lesson navigator in the text box down below. If you click the show more button, you will get uh, timestamps to get you to the different parts of this lesson. And also, you'll get a link to my lesson page that has all the tabs and my additional lesson notes, uh, things like that. Things that you'll need to help you get through this lesson. So use that if you feel you need it. Um, so on to the lesson. We're continuing with the chuck strum technique. We are um, we're using this technique that uses the thumb slap and the flick of the fingers to kind of strum a chord. And um, the song has very similar right hand patterns to the last song we did in the series, but it moves a little bit faster. Life is Wonderful is a very slow moving song. This song definitely picks up the pace a little bit, and there's more bar chords in this song. So it's a lot more challenging, but it'll definitely help your chops move along. So that's why we put it here. And um, the other thing is, a lot of people might think that this is a transcription of the CD recording. It is not. This is a transcription for a lesson of a live recording of the song that these two did. And the guitar technique for this live recording is completely different than what they did on the record. And you're going to notice throughout the series that the pluck and chuck technique, it tends to be a technique of live playing. It's a way that uh, a lot of guitar players used to spice up their live show a lot. And so I'm going to take a lot of songs out of live recordings and do the lessons based on those. And this is a good example of that. So um, there's a link on the lesson page to the video that I used for this lesson. So you can see it if you haven't seen it before. Uh, but yeah, this is, a, this is a really, really good song to develop your pluck and chuck technique with. So um, I'd say now's a good time to just get into it. I'm going to start with the fretting hand section, and then I'm going to do a section on the picking hand. I'm going to put the two together, and then I'll do a very slow playthrough at the end. So for the verse of this song, we're going to start out with just a regular old open position E major chord. And we're going to go up a chord scale. We're going to go up to the neck. We've got an F sharp minor chord here, which is basically... Think of an E minor chord with your ring and your pinky finger and move it up, bar it on the second fret. Then we're going to take that same shape and move it up two more frets, and that's going to give us a G sharp minor chord. And then, pretty similar to this is the C sharp minor chord we're going to. We're going to take these two fingers and move them up towards the thinner strings, and we're going to put the ring finger down on the fifth fret of the B string. And then we've got a C sharp minor chord. So with the words, those first four chords would sound like Christopher Robin and I walked along. So take a second, check those out, and when you've got that under your fingers, we'll go on to the next section. So from this C sharp minor chord, we're going to keep the shape, but we're going to move it towards the thicker strings, and we're going to move it up one fret. So again, we're in this kind of E major shape, but up here on the fifth fret. And that's going to give us an A major chord. And then we're going to take that shape and move it up two frets, which is going to give us a B major chord. And then the E shape is going to move all the way back down to the open position. You can either keep the, the, um, the fingers that you had on the bar here, or you can switch back to kind of the normal pointer finger Either way will do. So once you've kind of got those other four chords down, let's put it together so we have the whole verse. It sounds like Christopher Robin and I walked along under branches lit up by the moon. So once you've got the verses down, we are ready to go on to the pre-chorus. And just like we had this C sharp minor chord before, we're here barring on the fourth fret. But I've wandered much further today. We're kind of going backwards through the progression we had before. We're up to this G, G sharp minor chord again. But then we're going to go from the G sharp minor up to the A that we had before. 
And uh, sometimes I like to lift the bar and leave the B and the E string open. Gives it some nice color. It's just an extra thing you can do if you like it. So from the A chord, we're gonna take the same shape down to the second fret. And it's gonna make it an F sharp major chord. And then we have a little riff in here that goes from a B to an A. And the trick here is to figure out a fingering that's gonna get you smoothly from here to here, because it has to happen sort of fast. You have to go from this F sharp minor chord to B and then A and then right into an E chord. So what I tend to do is use my ring finger to create a little mini bar here. And then I'll use my pointer finger to create the same mini bar. And you're, from this B chord, you can just take the bar and move it over like so and we'll get you through it pretty quickly. Uh, but you can use other fingerings too. You can also just slide down from there. That's also possible. Whatever you feel most comfortable with so that you can just go smoothly from that B to that A and back to the E to the top. So a whole pre-chorus put together with the words, which sounds sort of like this. But I've wandered much further today than I should. And I can't seem to find my way back to the wood. And then you're into the chorus. So once you've got the pre-chorus changes down, we're ready for the chorus. And the chorus works a lot like the verses, a whole lot like the verses, but some of the chords change order. But it's all the chords are things we've seen before. So we're starting out with the E major chord. We're skipping the F sharp minor, kind of going straight up to this G sharp minor. Then back down to the F sharp minor. And then the same B down to A riff we had before. And down to the open position. And then you're going to repeat that little fragment two more times. That little chord progression happens three times total, right in a row. So it sounds sort of like this. So help me if you can, I've got to get Back to the house at Pooh Corner by one You'd be surprised there's so much to be done And then we're gonna have a little riff that kind of circles around a G sharp minor chord. It does the G sharp minor and then it goes to an E. Then it'll go back to the G sharp minor chord and then it'll end on a C sharp minor. So that's where he's saying Count all the bees in the hive Chase all the clouds from the sky So once he's got that part in there, he's ready for the very end of the chorus, which is kind of a quick motion from the A chord we had before, down through the G sharp minor, over to the C sharp minor. And the very last chord is a D major seven. It's pointer finger fifth fret of the A string, ring finger seventh fret of the D string, middle finger sixth fret of the G string, and the pinky on the sixth fret of the B string. So that whole little ending section is A, G sharp minor, C, and then it holds the D major seven for a bit. But the words it'll be Back to the days of a Christopher Robin and Pooh. And that's all the chords for this song. So I think we're ready to go on to the picking hand. So the picking hand patterns in this song are very similar to what we had in Life is Wonderful in that most of them are just a combination of thumb plucks and chuck strums but they move a little bit quicker than in the last song, so we definitely have to be on top of our game for this. So I'm gonna hold an E major chord with my fretting hand, and the main pattern for this song is just four strokes long, four even strokes. It's two thumb plucks, a chuck strum, and then another thumb pluck at the end. So if I were to count it, just play an E major chord with me if you want, and we would go one and two and one and two and one and two. That's the main thing. If you've got that down, you're well on your way. 
Now, this gets a little bit more sophisticated when the thumb starts moving around between strings to make the bass more active. Now, this is not necessary for the harmony of the song, but moving bass notes are very important in this technique in terms of getting it to be more evolved and more sophisticated sounding. So this is where it starts to you know, get into you to be a fancier guitarist. So the main thing that's going to happen is the thumb is going to start on a lower string and go to a higher one. So if we start out on the thick E string, it'll just be the thick E string and then the A over this E chord. So the same pattern changed would be one and two and 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 one. So you see, all I did was take the second thumb pluck in the pattern and move it up to the A string. So this pattern starts to get especially tricky when you have to integrate it across different chords that are on different strings. So if in the fretting hand I do an E major chord, which is six strings, and then an A major chord, which is five strings, and then a D major chord, which is four strings, and then I go back down through the A and the E, that would force me to put this pattern across pretty much all the likely bass strings that it would occur on. So what I'll do is I'll start out with the thumb being on the two lower strings of the chord, and then I'll do that fourth stroke of the pattern on the lower string and then up to the next highest string for the next chord. And then as I'm going back down, I'll do the lower string and then go back down to the bass note of the lower chord. So watch how just the thumb would go for some of that, and then I'll do the whole pattern. So if you can get the thumb to do that, and then you want to put in the chuck strums, the pa exercise would look sort of like this. One and two and 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 one and two one and two and one and two and one and two and one and two and one. So at that point, you've got the main pattern of the song down pat, and all the tricky things about shifting the thumb around, you'll definitely be ready to do if you can do that exercise. So there's one other right hand pattern that occurs a couple of times in this song, and it's similar to the first pattern um, in the beginning half of it, but it's twice as long as the other one. There's eight strokes in this pattern. So just like the first pattern had two thumb plucks, a chuck and then another thumb pluck at the end. The first half of this pattern is pluck, pluck, slap, pluck. So you can see the shape of it's a little bit similar, but in this one you're plucking with four fingers and you're not doing a chuck, you're just doing a thumb slap. So let's try to play just that first half of the pattern together. One and two and one and two and one and two and one and two and So the whole second pattern over eight beats sounds like this. Three and four and one and two and 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 three and four and. And if you want to, you can kind of take this exercise, this right hand pattern, through the same E major, A major, D major pattern where you're going up the strings and then back down. Um, but the key is that you've got that part down. That pattern I think is in some ways not as tricky because the thumb doesn't have to move around or have to predict bass strings as much. So um, that's the meat of the right hand material. There's a couple other fills that I'll explain in the integration section, but if you've got those two patterns down, you're definitely ready to tackle this song. 
So once you've done the fretting hand work and the picking hand work, you're ready to put them together. And the main thing I'm going to be explaining in this section is how to integrate the right hand pattern over the left hand chords because I said that the thumb's going to move around a lot between strings. That's the main thing you got to watch out for here. So if you remember, we do the verse by starting out with this uh, walking up the neck with this chord sequence right here. The thumb is going to start out going over the E and the A string, the chuck strum, and then back to the thick E string. So over those ascending chords, it looks like this. It does the E and the A, chuck, E, E string, E string, E string. And then when you get to the G sharp minor chord, your ring finger, kind of by default, is on the sixth fret of the A string. You're going to thumb the A string twice, and you're going to do this note, and then pointer finger on the fourth fret of the A string because that's going to get you into position for the C sharp minor chord. So getting there looks kind of like this. It's the E chord, the G F sharp minor chord, the G sharp minor chord, and you do the D sharp and the C sharp, and then you pluck the sixth fret of the D string. Same way you're kind of climbing up the E and the A string. Now you're climbing up the A and the D string for the C sharp minor chord. So once you've got that little part down, you're going to kind of go back to the E string from the C sharp minor chord. You're going to plant your thumb on the E string because you're going to play open E and then fifth fret to get you to the A chord. So from the C sharp minor chord. And you're back to E string, A string. And then to get back to the E chord, you just thumb the low E string twice because you do, you do the seventh fret and then the open string. And then you're back on this E chord in the bass position. So the whole verse up to that point sounds kind of like this. Christopher Robin and I walked along under branches lit up by the moon. So at the end of the first time he plays the verse, he has this special riff that goes on over the E chord. And the key that it has to have in it is that slide riff right there. There's some different ways that you could play it. I'm going to show you the way that I play it. But if you invent your own version, as long as it has that in it somewhere, you'll be fine. So what I started by doing is plucking the two outer E strings and then the A string. Still in the E position. So the first little motion. Then I'm going to go, I pluck the D and the B string with my pointer and my ring finger. Yeah, I guess it would be. And then I put my thumb on the A string again. So it's out of strings, and the D and the B, and A again. And then I do the slide riff. The slide is I'm using my middle finger on the second fret of the D string my ring finger on the 2nd fret of the B string, and I'm sliding from the 2nd fret up to the 4th fret right away, and then coming back down to the 2nd fret. So it looks like... Sometimes I use a little vibrato in there. So if you put that together slowly... The second time he comes through the verse, he'll just do a little arpeggio. Usually what he'll do is he'll thumb the thick E string and then the three thin strings, just like. But again, these endings aren't really essential things. You could kind of make up your own version of them and they'd probably be okay. As long as they're over an E chord, you're in good shape. So once you've got the verse all figured out, and then we'll go on to the pre-chorus here. Now this is when we're going to depart from that chuck strumming right hand pattern that we had before and go into the plucking pattern. We're over the C sharp minor chord here, and just like we were before, we're just pluck, pluck, stop, pluck. And this is a chord where I will, that thumb stroke at the end of the pattern, I'll mute the note. I won't, I won't play the bass note. It gives it a little bit more of a rhythmic effect. It makes it sound a little bit less you know, drawn out by the bass. So this is a particular chord where you go pluck, pluck, slap, pluck, slap, and then you'll kind of do a mute stroke with the thumb. And then really quickly you'll wind yourself up on the G sharp minor chord and do the same thing. And then 
I might you, you might play the bass note on this one. You could also mute it if you wanted to. And then again, we're on the A chord, same pattern. And here I would definitely start to play the bass on that last note. Because you want to hear the leading motion from the A down to this F sharp chord. So, so far what we've got is the C sharp minor, mute G sharp minor, the A, and we're down to the F for the F sharp major chord. And for just a brief moment, for just this F sharp chord, we're doing the right hand pattern from the verse again. You play the E in the A string and then you chuck and pluck the bottom note. And then we have a different sort of riff that goes on here. It's, it's sort of a fill that he throws into a bunch of parts of this song. It goes over the A and the B chord. Or I guess I should say the B and the A chord. That's a transition into the next section. And what he'll do is he'll take these three fingers and he will he'll pluck the D, the G, and the B string, and then pluck the thumb on the A string. So it looks kind of like the same thing over the A chord. What I tend to do is do sort of an A shape for both of these. I'll use I'll use sort of a mini bar to get this one, and then because the pointer finger is barring on the second fret, it can just kind of move over and do a mini bar on the same three strings. It makes it very easy to get. If you're not super comfortable with these mini bar chords, you could also kind of crunch your fingers in there. Either way will work, but the key is when you get out of the Chuck Strum pattern. So that's how that part goes. So once you've got the verse and the pre-chorus down, we're ready to go into the chorus. And it, the chorus is very similar to the verse. It's really just, again, the chords have changed order. So again, we're doing the thumb mostly on the E and the B string. It's over the E chord, the G sharp minor chord, the F sharp minor chord. And um, you can either thumb the E or the A here. He does both. But you know, you're know you going back into this B A riff that we just had in the transition into the chorus. So as long as your thumb winds up on the A string ready for you're in good shape. So if you're singing, it sounds like so help me if you can, I've got to get back to the house at the corner by one. You'd be surprised there's so much to be done. And you see, it does that pattern three times, and then you're into count all the bees in the hive. And we're back to the kind of slapping and plucking pattern. Count all the bees in the G sharp minor chord in the hive. G sharp minor, we chase all the clouds from the sky. Now you can do that that plucking and slapping riff on the C sharp minor. What I think Jim Messina plays is a riff that goes kind of like this. It's definitely in there. I'm not sure which one of them is playing it, but what he's basically doing is he's taking the vocal part off of the recording and he goes, chase the clouds and he's putting it in the guitar line. And it, it's this is a little bit of a tricky riff to get, but if you get it, it really spruces it up. So the way you get this is you're kind of in a C sharp minor chord, um, but you're really only starting out with um, the bar and the middle finger down. The middle finger's on the fifth fret of the A string, and you're barring across the fourth string. I'll use two of my fingers over here. For now, I'll choose my pointer and my middle finger. You pluck the E and the B string, and then the thumb. So these two fingers come first and then the thumb comes after. And you gotta stretch a little bit to get the ring finger to the seventh fret of the B string and the pinky to the eighth fret of the G string. And then you've still got the pointer finger on the fourth fret of the A string. The pointer finger just kind of holds the C sharp down here. So you kind of gotta stretch to get from. And then you wind up down, taking this shape down two frets. You can either slide it down like so, or you can switch the fingers. But in any case, you're getting the fifth fret of the B string and the sixth fret of the G string. And again, same right hand pattern. 
So that whole thing looks sort of like this. And then you let those two fingers go and the bar is on the fourth fret of the B and the D string. And that's the end of the riff. So to kind of integrate it into that section, it looks a little like this. You go chase all the clouds from the sky. And then the little tag ending that he has on the chorus is the A chord, the G sharp minor chord, and the C sharp minor chord. And then when he finally ends it, he as on this D major seven chord. A lot of times I'll leave the high E string open just for color. But usually you just play the middle four strings for that. And the last time he plays this, after he's done the second verse, he sometimes does some right hand variations in there. They usually involve sort of playing these as arpeggios. You'll go. Or you can pluck the upper notes sort of in a chord sort of fashion. But he, the first couple times he does it, he actually just kind of plucks the chord, plucks the chord, plucks the chord. Nothing too tricky there. And the one other little snag about this section is unlike the rest of the song, the meter changes here. Um, most of the song he's kind of in 4-4, four, four, you're counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Really briefly here, he's in 6-8, so the feel changes a bit. After you're coming out of... One and two and three and four and one, two, three, four, five, six. Back and four. One, two, three, four, five, six. One and two and three and four and one, two, three, four, five, six. One and two, three and four. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's a fun little thing that he does that gives the song a little bit more flavor at the end. It's not absolutely necessary, but if you want to impress your friends, um, I would throw it in there. I like playing it that way quite a bit. So now that we've integrated all those parts together in the right hand, now we're ready to play through the whole song slowly. Christopher Robin and I walked along under branches Questions to our and as our days disappeared all too soon. But I've wandered much further today than I should, and I can't seem to find my way back to the wood. So help me if you can. I've got to get back to the house, the corner by one. Be surprised there's so much to be done. Count all the bees in the high, chase all the clouds from the sky. Back to the days of a Christopher Robin, back to the ways of a Christopher Robin, back to the days of 